Hello from sunny South Africa. I'm Andrew from Crash Bang Prototyping and today I'd like to go through one of the more popular tutorials from our website, how to use a USB Tiny. There's a wide variety of programmers to use to program your AVR microcontrollers, but the one that I often quite like to use is this one, the USB Tiny. It's great value and it's also open source, which means that you can build your own if you want to. Let's jump in then to getting the USB Tiny working with Atmel Studio. While Atmel Studio is loading, I'll just dive quickly into the rationale behind creating this tutorial. It might seem like a rather obvious topic, creating a tutorial to get a programmer working with Atmel Studio, but the USB Tiny doesn't natively work with Atmel Studio. It's not natively supported by Atmel Studio. So in order to get it working, we need to connect AVR Dude, which does support the USB Tiny, to Atmel Studio as an external tool. And that's what this tutorial is going to walk you through. Let's start by opening a sample project. I've created a very simple project, just blinking an LED on and off. Quick look at the code in the, in the program. And you can see here that we are basically blinking uh, pin PV0 on for 100 milliseconds. And then we're turning it off again for one second. So it's really a really simple blink program that you're used to working with. Now normally when you use a programmer with Atmel Studio, you'd select the tool by going into the project properties. And then under the tool tab, click on the debugger programmer that you want to work with. In this case, even though the USB Tiny is plugged into the computer, you'll see that it's not recognized. The only programmer available to us is the simulator. So that's obviously no good. Let's create then a profile to allow the USB Tiny to work with Atmel Studio. In order to configure the USB Tiny to work with Atmel Studio, we need to create an external tool profile. So from the Tools menu, click on External Tools, and this is where we configure the connection to AVR Dude. Let's start off by giving it a name. I'm going to call it USB Tiny Atmega 328P. It's important that we specify the process or the microcontroller that we're using in the description, as the arguments here will vary by microcontroller. Next, we need to specify where AVR Dude is stored on our computer. In my case, it's on my D drive in the AVR Dude subdirectory. And we're also going to use that as the initial directory. Now, let's move on to looking at the arguments that AVR Dude accepts. I've copied the arguments into Notepad. It's a little easier for us to dissect there than it is within Atmel Studio. The first argument, dash C USB Tiny, specifies the programmer that we're using, the USB Tiny. The second parameter, dash P M328P, specifies the microcontroller. In this case, M328P stands for the Atmega 328P. If you're using a different Atmel microcontroller here, then this is the parameter that you change. Following that, we have three dash V switches. These force AVR Dude to go into verbose mode, which means that additional information is output that we can use for troubleshooting if we need to. And then finally, following the dash U parameter is basically the nuts and bolts of what we're working with. So this tells AVR Dude where the hex file is located and what it needs to do with the hex file. In this case, we're telling it to flash to the microcontroller. The W parameter is a write parameter. And then this highlighted portion, dollar target do dollar target name dot hex, is the hex file that we want to upload onto the microcontroller. Dollar target do and dollar target name are internal variables in Atmel Studio that specify where Atmel Studio has compiled the hex file to the target directory and the target name of the hex file. So let's copy that into the arguments field here. And then finally, we just tick the use output window checkbox, which forces Atmel Studio to display the, the output in the output window to make it easier for us to debug. Let's click OK. Now, if we look under the tools menu, you can see that there's a USB Tiny Atmega 328P profile, the one that we've just created. Now that we've done that, let's upload it to the microcontroller. Let's start by building the project. 
and you can see that the build has succeeded on the output window at the bottom of the screen. And from here, click on the Tools menu and then the USB Tiny external tool profile that you just created. You see a whole lot of information flashes past in the output window. And we know that it was successful by the AVR Dude EXE done. Thank you statement right at the bottom. If we scroll up, you'll see there's a whole lot of output that AVR Dude has, has pushed through using the verbose output flags. Um, a bunch of stuff about fuses and um, device signatures. And if we keep going up, uh, you can see where, to, where, the, where the execution initially started. So none of this is really interesting to us unless we actually want to do any troubleshooting. You can scrolling through this, the one statement that we're really interested in is this writing statement. It's not necessary to go and check it each time, but here you can see that the program was successfully uploaded and written to the microcontroller. Of course, on my side, I can see that the program was successfully written because I'm looking at an LED that's blinking on for 100 milliseconds and then linking off for a second. So that's my proof, um, but here's verification for you. And that's really all that there is to using the USB Tiny with Atmel Studio. If you plan to use the USB Tiny with other microcontrollers, just remember to change the dash P argument uh, in the command line instruction under the profile. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have many happy hours using the USB Tiny with Atmel Studio. If you prefer a written version of this tutorial, then please do follow the link in the YouTube notes to my website www.crashbang.com and there you'll find a full written tutorial on how to use the USB Tiny with Atmel Studio.